So I've been trying to dial in this uh, voltage regulator circuit for a power amp that I'm building. Uh, but I've run into quite an interesting issue that I think would help others in uh, designing their um, power supplies. So as we can see here, this is a pretty typical voltage regulator circuit. Uh, I have, I'm going to have a, tw a 20 volt um, transformer here on the input which will likely, I mean, it can go up, it'll probably go up to 27 is what I have it right now, you know, after it's regulated and all that. Um, and I'm wanting to get um, 24 volts out. So my regulator is working good, but I have a frequency attenuation problem in that the, um, the AC signal is still coming in quite high at a at 60 to 120 hertz. So if I run this frequency uh, test here, we'll see that I'm getting values at this output from around negative 67 or negative 60. Six, all the way down to 72, negative 72 at 120, which, especially at audio standards and high fi audio standards, um, would be just wouldn't cut it, right? Uh, that's just too high. That's actually probably very audible. So. Um, just kind of a general rule of thumb is that the human ear would be able to hear noise somewhere around negative 110, negative 115 is where you'd want to cut off, right? So anything below that um, is likely not audible to the human ear. So. As you, if you're familiar with any hi-fi audio equipment or maybe even recording equipment, most of it's around negative 95 and below. So we're not even reaching negative 95 here. So and this problem can be can be um, alleviated quite easily uh, in general. So what I generally do. Um, in most other situations, a little bit, you just put a resistor right here, say a 500 ohm, and that would complete the uh, the low pass filtration here. And then let's see what we have. Negative 120. So negative 120. Uh, it's actually closer to negative 119, all the way down to a to negative 132. At, 120 hertz that's great that works but we have to keep in mind about what we're designing here is I'm designing a power amp right this is going to be a solid state power amp which means that it's going to draw a lot of current this is this is a five current device here right so I want this power supply to be able to draw and regulate about 24 volts at 5 amps. But if I have 24 volts at 5 amps, how many watts am I going to dissipate out of this resistor? Well, we can just do a little bit of math here. So how do we get watts? We just multiply the voltage times the current, so our voltage is 24, as we want the output and the current, and we want to draw this 5 amps. So that gives us 120 watts. So that means I'd have to have a 120 watt resistor. That's obviously unrealistic because a 120 watt resistor is just all too big, and I wouldn't want to dissipate that much energy out of the 120 watt resistor anyways, even if it was in a smaller package, let's say. And when I say 
a smaller package, so an average 120 watt resistor or something that we, you would use for a um, a dummy load when you're on a test bench. It's not something that you put inside of a circuit. Because obviously it's just it's far too impractical, and I'd also um, be losing so much uh, so much energy out of it. So it's a really a very inefficient way to do this attenuation, even though it works very well. So how do I get around this problem? Well. I put a little thought into it and decided let's try putting a resistor here or a transistor excuse me putting a power transistor here that would aid in one having some some um, some internal impedance and also maybe some DC resistance, uh, and that's how I would get my attenuation. So if I put this power resistor here, and this is a 2N3055, it's a very typical, very typical um, power transistor. Now this, this transistor is able to draw up to 15, so this is great, so I don't want to run, run it at five. I think it goes up to, 15 amps at 60 volts. I'm only running it at five amps at 24. So it should be fairly relaxed, right? And not stressing it out too much. So if I put this here, let's see what we get. We get negative 186. Negative 186 at 60 hertz and negative 198 dB at 120, which is excellent. That's better than what I was even shooting for, and it solves our problem, right? So this this will dissipate some heat, but nowhere near the amount that that resistor was going to, and it's an also a lot. It's in a lot smaller package. I actually, in in real time, I'll actually be using a TIP instead of a 2N. So there's a there's a tip model of this same resistor. It's not in a can, but it's in like a, just like a typical typical um, upright resistor package. So. for this and I'll leave some literature about it underneath this video so technically what I'm doing here so again if we back up I did this to attenuate the um, to attenuate the frequency response so I would to get rid of the noise essentially in ripple but I was basically using this Theoretically, I was using this as um, kind of an impedance source and a resistant resistor source to replace that uh, 500 ohm resistor. But there's also another way to look at it, which there is some documentation on um, about using this as what would be called a capacitance multiplier. So. This can also be looked at as a capacitance multiplier, meaning that the gain of this transistor is amplifying the capacitance here at this 4,700 microfarad cap. So there we have it. There's a quick and easy solution to getting rid of your 60 hertz signal, getting rid of some ripple in your power supplies for audio amplifiers or any other application. 
I'll leave some links to some literature about the capacitance multiplier, and you all can go from there. Thanks for watching.